Hello everybody. Today we're looking at the LED highly reliable Holt Peak HP 890DN digital multimeter DMM voltage current meter capacitance tester electrical instruments. I guess that's what that one says right there. According to the box, this is the model 890DN. And as you can see from the box, the the 890 the DN model seems to have a better range and a lot more things, although uh, this model over here will measure inductance. Inside the box, we have a zippered carrying case. Not, not, not very bad. We have our uh, HP 890DN. We have a uh, Type K thermal couple and some test leads along with a, uh, uh, a lavishly printed uh, instruction manual. Looking at the back, we notice that there's a, a stand. Here you can see it stands up on, on the, the back. And then here is actually a magnet. So this thing uh, can actually be stuck to a, a piece of metal and not fall off. We can see that there's a screw here and a screw here. And I'm pretty sure we take those off to change the battery. It does not come with batteries and requires two AA batteries. We remove the two screws and look at the battery case. I put two batteries in there and we notice that there are two fuses off to the right. These two fuses, these are for the current range. We can see the left fuse is a half an amp and the right fuse is a 20 amp fuse. The included uh, test leads are, are okay, they're not bad. They're not total junk. Looking at the dial, we can see it starts from off and has voltage ohms, uh, capacitance, frequency, temperature, then it starts going into uh, transistor gain and current ranges all the way to off again. Now, here's an interesting thing. You notice these two yellow uh, things. Uh, there's only two holes open. And as you go through the volts, it, it stays like that until, okay, now once you get to degree C, it changes over there. And then, as you go to the, the high current range, it, goes, it shows, it opens the, the 20 amp uh, thing. So that's a, an interesting little mechanism. I certainly hope it, it uh, doesn't break. Okay, I've, I put, uh, I got, I, I'm in the off on the left side and uh, I got something in the 20 amp hole. And actually I can't turn this. So uh, the knob is locked until, until this thing is removed. Here I have the test leads plugged into a, a wall. And you can kind of see uh, I'm in the, the volt uh, with the squiggly line, of course, which would mean volts AC. Get a little closer uh, look at that thing. And we got 119.2 volts. The reason I got this is to replace my old piece of junk one. This is like a $5 multimeter I bought at Fry's a long time ago. So I figured I might as well get it. I use them a lot, so I might as well get a, a nice one. But I notice that the cheap multimeter says, you know, just about uh, 120 volts, and this one says 119.1. Uh, so it's hard to figure out which one to believe, although uh, I'm sure the electric company would like to say they're giving us 120 volts. I, I don't know, they're, they're pretty close. I don't know which one's right. So looking at this unit closer, let's talk about the impressive range of stuff that it claims to be able to do. It can do AC or DC voltage, resistance, capacitance, temperature, minus 20 degrees C to 1000 degrees, diode test, frequency, duty cycle, continuity, transistor HFE, and a thing called NCV, which is a, 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 a voltage detection from afar. So we'll test all of those things and see what happens. We saw it to do AC volts, I might as well do DC volts. Here it says uh, minus 9.19 volts for uh, a 9 volt battery. Bleeds and now it says uh, 9.2 and sometimes 9.19 positive volts. Okay, I switched the selector to the ohms. Uh, it has a little picture of sound and a diode uh, on this thing here. And we hit select right now. It says auto and, and it's in the mega ohm range. Here we're in the diode range. And here you can see the little sound icons on there. And this is uh, supposed to be the, the beeping. So you can hear it beeps when we got continuity here. Okay, uh, I now set it to diode. You can see there's a diode symbol on the front here. 
and we go across and we have the the negative on the line on the cathode there so it says zero oops 0 0.427 for the forward voltage drop reverse the leads and it says open circuit so uh, it's a good dial. I'm now going to measure a capacitor. I have a 1,500 microfarad capacitor, and uh, they, and according to the the manual, it'll take like 15 seconds to measure something like this. Let me just get to make sure I get it. Okay, it's in the nanofarad range right now. Now it says overload. Well, I, I couldn't do the 1,500 uh, capacitors. This is a 470 microfarad capacitor. Oh, it's overload. Well, well, I guess that's why they have this nicely printed manual. But apparently the, the highest capacitance it can do is a, a 100 microfarads. So that's the reason my 470 was overload. This might be interesting. This is a bad capacitor. It has a big bulge on the top. I replace these uh, bulging bad capacitors. And let's just see, it's supposed to be a 470 microfarad capacitor. Let's just see what the meter says it is. There it is. The meter says it's 7 microfarads. So it's supposed to be a 470. And it's only measuring 7. So I guess that's why that piece of electronic equipment didn't work until I replaced it. We're measuring the line again. Let's go down here. And you can see I have my thing set to frequency. And the free survey says 59.9 hertz. Well, here it is. It says 60 hertz for the line voltage. Now I'm going to press the button that says hertz duty cycle. Now it's got duty cycle. And it looks like we're exactly 50% duty cycle. Okay, now I want to talk about NCV, which stands for Non-Contact Voltage Measurement. You can see there's an NCV button there. Oh, great. And you can see there's a row of LEDs. You can kind of see there's a red LED to the left, a green LED to the right. I, I don't know, and then something to the middle. I don't know what those two to the left are, but the green LED is for the non-voltage, uh, non-contact voltage thing. So if you press and hold this button, the LED comes on, and I hope you can see that on camera. So here's something interesting. I think maybe that center LED was actually a photo sensor because now that I have the lights off, you can kind of see how this LED comes on here. But anyway, I'm going to press the non-voltage. And you're supposed to just hold this thing up to uh, voltage, and the top of the, of the sensor right along here is supposed to do voltage. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. I just touched and it does that. Okay. Contact voltage sensing was kind of a bust, but let me just show you something interesting. I, I just plugged in uh, one test lead and I got it on AC volts, and if I just hold it by the wire, I can uh, get uh, quite a bit of voltage here. Look at that. I mean, that, so just having the test lead next to a wire seems to induce a lot of voltage on there, and that seems to be a, a lot better than the non-contact voltage sensing. I am not too impressed with the non-contact voltage sensing, but I did find one area where it's sensitive. If I have this light switch on, okay, you can see I got the green LEDs on, and oh, oh there it goes. So the, there is one thing, but boy, I, well, it seems to work there, but uh, if I have the light off, oops. By the light off, it doesn't seem to do anything. Now we can try the temperature sensor. And uh, it seems to be reading a, a very likely temperature, 20, 21 degrees. It's kind of, it seems likely. But let's just give it some real temperature here. Here it goes, oh, 24, 35, 45, 70, 90, 110. 140, 160, 190. Well, let me turn off the heat there. That should be enough. Well, it's uh, certainly, and then now, now it's cooling down. Well, you know, that part seems to work. I don't know. I, uh, as far as I understand, uh, these type K thermal couples are supposed to be very, very accurate.
As the temperature slowly cools down, I'd like to point one more button that I never bothered with. Of course, we got a hold button. Now it's holding, we take it off. And now uh, we can do relative. So as this thing cools down, uh, we can see it change. Although, as luck has it, it's not, no, it's went down one degree. It, it's, uh, anyway, all, all, all the ranges, or all the measurements have that. So claims to have auto power off and auto backlight. Now, I didn't see any backlight for this thing. Uh, the only thing I have is, uh, you know, I mean, you turn off the light and the LED comes on, but, uh, you know, th there's no backlight here. Well, to wrap up our review, here's the carrying case. I put the thermal couple. It's got a little place for the instructions and the thermal couple. And uh, it wraps up real nicely. It looks like a, 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 a usable case. So I don't, I, I don't know. It's pretty good. I paid like twenty less than $25 for it. Got it from uh, China. And they mailed it to me. There's no taxes, no shipping. So uh, it's, 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 a, it's a step up from the one I paid $5 for. Anyway. Bye-bye.